From our very waking moments until we go to sleep, we find ourselves in situations where we have to make a choice. Whether it is a subconscious reaction or a conscious decision, we weigh up our options and choose the path we want to follow. When we use our choices wisely, we really start to grow. My name is David Conway, and I am someone who chose not to give up. After completing high school in 2001, I moved from Mackay to Brisbane to study at university. I found work as a casual storeman and soon worked out how to manage my time between uni, work, study and leisure. I've, all, I've lo always loved participating in sport and outdoor activities and always, was always keen to go surfing, mountain biking, camping or rock climbing in my spare time. My job was also very physical, which was great because I got to keep up my fitness level and remain active. In February of 2004, a climbing partner and I went camping at Boona, a township southwest of Brisbane. We arrived late in the afternoon, set up camp and had an early dinner. In the morning, I fully checked the integrity of all of my equipment, including my safety harness, my helmet, the ropes, the carabiners, and the anchors, before we set out to do some climbing. Our first climb was a success, and we were really happy with what we had achieved, and wanted to get another climb in before it got too hot. As I was the lead climber, I set, off, set up the static anchor rope and started up the rock face. I remember how hot the sun felt on my skin. I had climbed about 20 metres, placed an anchor into the rock face, clipped my rope into the carabiner. That is the last thing I remember. When I came to, three weeks had passed. Waking up in intensive care was frightening. I could hear a lot of people. I couldn't see a thing and I couldn't talk as I had a breathing tube in keeping me alive. This made me feel very vulnerable. To help me feel more connected, the doctors came up with a way for me to communicate and I would like to show you all what that was like. Could you hold the hand of the person next to you? Close your eyes. If you can understand me, squeeze that person's hands once. If you don't understand me, squeeze their hand twice. This was the only way that I could communicate while I was in intensive until I had the breathing tube removed. I can't imagine how the ordeal I had put my family through. Feel free to let go of each other's hands. <laughs> I remember the day that my parents and my brother Pete told me about my accident and my journey in the hospital up to that point. I, in my accident, I'd suffered complex injuries. I broke my back, injured my spinal cord, damaged my optic nerves, and I was now steroid dependent as I had a head injury. When my brother visited me in the hospital, he was told I only had six hours to live. My parents were still traveling to me and had no idea of my dire situation. When my parents arrived at the hospital, they arranged for me to receive the last rites as I wasn't expected to survive the night. It was very touch and go over the next 10 weeks. So it was on that day that I realised I needed to accept what had happened to me, squeeze every moment out of the life I had been given back, and in so, honour the choices my family had made to support me. My parents worked for an amazing company that had allowed my dad 
to take the extended leave he needed to be with me for the first 10 weeks of my journey. My mum was able to work in their part-time in their Brisbane office until I returned home to Mackay in May of 2005. My sister Christine stayed in Mackay, looking after our family home and our dog, visiting me when she could. My brother Pete withdrew from his university course so that he could support me while I was in hospital. My choice was to embrace the changes I needed to make to ensure I would evolve beyond my accident. I spent nearly 15 months in hospital as there were a lot of hiccups along the way. This gave me a lot of time to think about my situation. I learned a lot about patience and gratitude here. Being, almost, being totally blind at first, I had to rely on a nurse to help me with a meal if a family member or a friend wasn't there. Sometimes when the nurses were really busy, the person collecting the tray would return before I had eaten, inquiring if I wasn't hungry. I would just reply, no, I'm waiting for a nurse to help me. Once I had been assisted, I was just so grateful that someone was there to help me. I knew then that my I had I knew then that my daily routine would be di would be different to what I knew. I had lost some of my independence and I would have to redefine my life. Due to my lack of vision, the normal rehab process was changed for me as driving and cooking were out of the equation. An occupational therapist organised a visit to the Blind Society shop behind the hospital. It was here I was able to purchase a talking watch and clock. These were great, as then I knew what time it was without having to ask someone. It was here that I got back into art. I started sketching some basic landscapes with a marking pen and an A3 pad. My vision was like being in the middle of night without the lights on and I could only see shadows and shapes. Before my accident, I had studied two years of an environmental science degree and being aware that my vision would play an important part in a science lab, I had to rethink my options for my study and my career. I knew I had to overcome some of the communication challenges that I have. Due to mainstream, due to modern technology, mainstream products have been developed with accessible programs in them. I can now use an iPhone independently. Thanks, Siri. And, and I have a screen reading program on my computer. I call it JAWS. Keeping up with technology has allowed me to keep in touch with friends everywhere and what's going on in the world. I was required to participate in a transitional rehabilitation program as part of the discharge process from hospital. I stayed in an accessible house for six weeks so I could learn to live in the wider community. Support staff would visit me during the day to help with my personal care, breakfast, lunch, and so on. My mum stayed here and helped me out when she wasn't at work. I started learning the screen reading program here, and I also started using charcoal for drawings. It was here that I was able to help a support worker, a lovely lady from Fiji with her maths and English she was doing as a prerequisite for university. She would stay back after her shift and we would go through her lessons and I would help her 
with anything she was having trouble with. She went on to graduate with a nursing degree. Back home in Mackay, and after mastering the screen reading program, JAWS, I contacted the university and I was able to transfer my degree into a course that was relevant to my area of study, but also achievable. In August 2009, I attended my graduation from Griffith University, gaining a Bachelor of Environmental Studies. I made some inquiries about supported accommodation in Mackay and wanted to give it a go. As much as I love my family, the idea of having my own space again really appealed to me. I moved in and soon learned how to organise my daily routine with the help of support staff. With my time free from study and doing a bit of part-time work, I was able to start volunteering with some of the organisations that had assisted me. I love helping out and I find it very rewarding to help out people in a similar situation to me. Art has always been a part of my life. In high school, friends used to get me to paint abstract canvases for their rooms. One friend even got me to paint a pair, a pair of flares for her. Being able to continue with my hobby has allowed me to set up a small business, has helped me to manage my pain and improve my vision. These days I am now able to distinguish some colours. My life changed in a split second. One moment I was a fit young man studying in an area that I was passionate about, travelling and enjoying life to the fullest. I am now a partially blind paraplegic who has more medical issues than you want to know about. But I still enjoy life to the fullest. Apart from the physical challenges I have had to overcome, I've also had to realign my outlook on life. I was a very me-orientated person, whereby most of the things I did was for myself. My accident has taught me so much, especially in the way of interacting with people, taking things for granted, and how life can change at any moment. I received so much help from the medical professionals, my family, friends, to people I didn't even know, that it changed me as the person I was to the person I now am. I feel I am still evolving. I find that choice is empowering. It means that you are no longer controlled by your circumstances and you are able to choose your own destiny. Sure, along the way you may make the wrong choice, but realising it and adjusting to it is also a choice. Being able to do this helps you evolve as the person you want to be. My name is David Conway and I choose not to give up. What do you choose? Thank you.